الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومطاعنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍّ عَمِيقًا صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من حج لله فلم يرفث ولم يفسق رجع كيوم ولدته أمه أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم respected ulama ikram elders beloved brothers in islam as we mentioned last week we have entered into that period of the islamic calendar from the first of shawal which is referred to as ayyamul hajj the fifth pillar of islam these are the days of hajj and even though many of us will not be proceeding for hajj this year they are certain asbaq lessons haqaiq and realities that are linked and that pertain to this great pillar of islam that it is important that we revisit and we identify with this is such a great amal the importance that the quran has attached to it the ahadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the verse of the quran from surah al-hajj which i recited in the beginning allah taala command sayyidina ibrahim alayhi salam allah taala had blessed that nabi of allah that he and his son sayyidina ismail alayhi salam involved themselves in what we call the reconstruction of kaabatullah allah taala addresses him wa adhin fin nas bil hajj that o oh, ibrahim adhin this word adhin those who are familiar with arabic it comes from what we call bab taf'il it is an a verb it is imperative but taf'il means bar bar do it over and over again like you hear the adhan we heard the adhan just now the adhan is called out over and over again same word adhin make ilan again and again proclaim why because hajj and umrah is something tabi'u bayna al-hajj wa al-umrah fa innahuma yanfiyan al-faqr wa an-nifaq kama tanfi an-nar khubath al-hadid wa al-dhahab wa al-fidda wa laysa lil-hajj al-mabrur jaza'un illa al-jannah allah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said keep making hajj and umrah if you can't actually do it have the tamanna in your heart let that cry let that call let that burning anticipation be there in the heart tabi'u tabi'u keep making hajj and umrah why what will allah give you fa innahuma yanfiyan al faqr wa an nifaq two things allah's rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam promises and this is nabawi nuskha this is a nabawi prescription keep making hajj and umrah allah will free you from nifaq from hypocrisy and allah will free you from poverty like fire cleanses gold or silver or steel 
In the same way, making Hajj and Umrah over and over again, Rasulullah Wasallam said, will cleanse you, will make you park, will protect you from nifaq and hypocrisy, and it will protect you from faqr and poverty. This we dealt with quite at length. That the pukar and call comes from Allah and the money that he spent, you will never get poor. You will never get poor by spending on Hajj and Umrah. Allah will give it back to you. This is the promise of Allah on the tongue of Janab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, Wa'adhin, O Ibrahim, openly proclaim, call, invite the people for Hajj. To understand the dilemma that is facing Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, we have to turn the clock back. 4,000 years. Makkah Mukarramah at that time, Banu Jurhum, its tribe had settled, scattered dwellers, middle of the desert, middle of nowhere, no satellite communication. And Allah Ta'ala is addressing Adhin Fin Nas. Allah is commanding this Nabi, call the whole world for Hajj. So, what is his reaction? Wama Yablugo Sauti. That Ya Allah. It is doubtful anyone will hear this call. وَمَا يَبْلُغُ sauti. How is my voice going to reach the whole of humanity? So Allah Ta'ala says to Ibrahim alayhi salam, أَذِّنْ وَعَلَيَّ الْبَلَاغ Ibrahim, your job is to obey my command. You give the invitation. You give the pukar. You extend the invitation. You make the call, the proclamation. وَعَلَيَّ الْبَلَاغ I have taken upon myself to convey that invitation. Fasaida Jabal Abi Qubais. He climbs onto the mountain Abu Qubais. In Allah Ta'ala Qad Amarakum bi Hajjihad al Bayt. Liyuthibakum bihi al Jannah. Wa yujirakum min adab al Nar. O humanity, ya you and Nas, verily Allah has commanded you with Hajj of Baytullah. Why? Why is Allah calling you? Does Allah benefit in any way the hardship that the journey entails, the discomfort of tying the ihram, the financial difficulty, the physical difficulty? This will not benefit Allah in any way. Why is Allah calling you? لِيُثِيبَكُمْ لِيُجِيرَكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ النَّارِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَىٰ أَمَرَكُمْ بِحَجِّ عَذَا الْبَيْتِ لِيُثِيبَكُمْ بِهِ الْجَنَّةِ وَيُجِيرَكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ النَّارِ Allah in return for this Hajj and Umrah wants to give you Jannat. And Allah wants to save you from Jahannam. That is why Rasulullah said, Al Hajjul Mabrur, Laysa lahu jazaun illa al Jannah. He said, Hajj Mabrur accepted Hajj, there is no other recompense for it but Jannat. Allah Ta'ala made it such, Ibrahim alayhi salam gave the pukar. Every person living on the surface of the earth, Muslim, non-Muslim at that time, heard the physical voice of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Every unborn child in the womb of the mother heard the voice. Every soul in alam arwa to be born till Qiyamah heard this pukar that Allah is inviting you for Hajj of Baytullah. And according to Allah's acceptance, certain souls were inspired to recite the labbaik once, certain several times, certain remain silent. Those that recited the labbaik once, Allah takes it upon himself that in the lifespan of that person, that person will go for hajj once. Those that recited it several times, Qurtubi rahimullah mentions this in his tafsir. Those that recited it several times, Allah takes it upon himself. As I mentioned previously, at the expense of repetition, not your wealth, not accreditation, not your passport, not visa, not any government, Allah takes it upon Himself that that number of times Allah will take you for Hajj. This is a unique amal. Every aspect of this fifth pillar of Islam has certain unique aspects that are linked to it. We need to identify and connect ourselves with this. Hajj, in reality, is mulaqat with Allah. 
it is meeting Allah, it is the mazhara, it is the display of ishq, of muhabbat, of love for Allah, it is finding Allah. That is why Quran says, Walillahi ala nas, walillah, this is for Allah. Allah has to become yours and you have to become Allah's. This heart has to brim over with the love, with the ta'alluq, with the ishq, with the muhabbat of Allah. If you read as a sheikh, Mona Zakaria rahmatullahi's fazail hajj. In fact, we are encouraged during this period to read that particular kitab so that that shock, that inclination, that cry, that pukar can be there in the heart. Beg from Allah. You want accreditation? You want a visa? You want passport? You want the means? By the qasam of my Allah, you will find it on the musalla at the time of the hajjud. Go and beg and cry before Allah and see how Allah opens the way. Once in the days of Hajj, the true Ushaq, the friends of Allah gathered. And then the topic came up. What was the topic? What is the meaning of Ishq? What is the meaning of Muhabbat? What is the meaning of true love for Allah? What does it mean to be the devoted slave of Allah? So various of those mashayikh gave their opinions. Junaid Baghdadi rahimahullah, who's known as Tajul Arifin, who's known as the prince or the crown of the Arif Billahs, those who recognized Allah. He was a young man at that time. So others gave their opinions, what is ishq? He remained silent. Finally they turned to him. Ma taqulu fi hadha ya Iraqi. That, oh Iraqi youngster, what is your opinion about this? Fatra qasa'a. He lowered his head, thought a little bit. Thumma dama'at ayna. Then the tears started brimming over in his eyes. And looking down with great humility, he said, Abdun zahibun an nafsihi, muttasilun bi dhikri rabbihi, qa'imun bi adai huquqihi, Nadirun ilayhi bi qalbihi Ahraq qalbahu anwaru haybatihi Wasafa shurbahu min ka'si wuddihi Wan kashafa lahu aljabbaru min astari ghaybihi Fa in takallama fa'anillah Wa in sakana fama'allah Wa in taharraka fabi amrillah Wa in amila fabillah Fahuwa lillah Fahuwa billah Wa lillah wa ma'allah we can say the Arabic, we can translate it also. Suffice to say the effect of this proclamation of Junaid Baghdadi rahimahullah as to what is ishq and muhabbat for Allah. Every one of those mashayikh, not a single eye was dry. They were sobbing profusely when they heard this. And they said, ma ala, ma ala hadha min mazid. Nothing more can be said on this topic than what you have said. Who is the true one who seeks Allah? Abdun zahibun an nafsihi. It is that slave of Allah who has become oblivious of himself. He has forgotten himself. He has given up everything of this dunya. Your local masjid, your local masjid, what does the Quran say? Khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. Adopt zina. Let there be some rob, some authority about your dressing. Come in a good manner, dress properly in sunnah. Let there be zina, put some itar on. Khudu zinatakum inda kulli masjid. And the best of every masjid, oval masjid, the highest masjid there, ashaythu tafil. Come with your hair disheveled. Come with your body full of dust. Come with the cloth of your ihram. Your clothes are not even sewn. Dishevel. That is the best hajj. Ayyul hajji af afdal. Nabi Islam said, was asked, who is the best hajji? He said, ashaythu tafil. In other words, apne aap ko mita dena. Finish yourself. You are not concerned about anything, even your appearance. You have come to find your Allah. 
Abdun Zahibun An Nafsihi. The true Ashik of Allah is the one who has become oblivious of himself. Abdun Zahibun An Nafsihi. Muttasilun bi dhikri Rabbihi. Qaimun bi adai hukukihi. Nadirun ilayhi bi qalbihi. Allah has become the focus. He has handed himself over to Allah. He is drowning in the love and marifat of Allah. He is, he has, he has, ab- He's, he's looking at Allah with the eye of his heart. His heart has become inflamed with the fire of Allah's haybat and jalal and azmat. He has drunk to his full from the cup of Allah's love. Such is his connection with Allah. When kashafa lahul jabbar min astari ghaybihi, Allah has removed the veil of the unseen. And from the eye of the heart, it is almost as if he is seeing Allah. Such is his consciousness of Allah that now when he speaks, he speaks according to the command of Allah. When he is silent, it is with the command of Allah. When he is in solitude, he is drowning in the love of Allah. He has handed himself over to Allah so that every thought, every movement, every haraka, every every decision of his is clouded by one concern only. Does this please my Allah? This is ishq and muhabbat. This is what is hajj. To find Allah, reward what will Allah give? Come back to that verse of the Quran. Wa'adhin finnas. Again, I'm digressing. Those who understand Arabic, this doesn't make sense. Allah says, command, call, invite. Fi. It shouldn't have been finnas. Fi means inside. In other words, you fill a container. You take ma'un filkas, take water and put it into a container. There you use the word fi. Allah is saying fin nas. Invite inside the people. What it means? Mufassirin explain. They say an analogy is being given. When you give the invitation for hajj, give it in such a manner that you give it with the azmat of hajj. With the greatness of hajj. With the robe of hajj. With the authority of Hajj, that this is not something ordinary. Like how Hajj ki azmat logo ke dilo ke andar bar jai, jaise pani bartan me bar jate hai. Like how you will fill a container with water, fill the azmat of this amal in the hearts of humanity. Wa adhin finnas bil Hajj ya tuka. Allahu Akbar. Shan of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Because Allah Ta'ala. This is Allah Ta'ala's cognizance of the Qurbani of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That Allah says, they will come to you. Should have been Ya'tu ni. They will come to me, to Allah, to Allah's house. It is doubtful in the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam if even few people came for Hajj. Yet, Allah Ta'ala in this verse is telling us that every Haji till Qiyamah is the guest of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ya'tu ka, Ya'tu ka. وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا They will come walking. وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ ضَامِرْ And on lean camels. Why lean camels? Because from far and wide, as the camel travels long distance, it gets lean. In other words, from far and wide, people will come. Rijalan, walking, walking is mentioned first, transport is mentioned second, why? Because the pedal hajj, the walking hajj is superior to the hajj on an animal, why? Because the walking hajj is closer, closer to this mazhara of ish, of muhabbat, I have given up everything, I am walking, searching for my Allah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, when he was on his deathbed, he gathers his family members and he gives them this wasiyat. He says, Man hajja min makkata mashiyan hatta yarjia ila makka kutibat lahu bi kulli khatwatin sab umiyati hasana min hasanatil haram. Allahu Akbar. He says, A man who walks from Makkah for hajj till he returns back to Makkah walking for every step. Allah will give him 700 hasanat from the hasanat of the haram. And what is the hasanat of the haram? Kullu hasana bi miati alf hasana. 
every hasana of the haram is multiplied 100,000 times. In other words, Allah will give him 70 million reward for every step that he will take walking for hajj. This is that amal. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting in Masjid al-Khayf. One Ansari Sahabi and one Sahabi from the Banu Thaqif clan, they come to him. They say, Ya Rasulullah, we have come to ask some questions. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make them understand and to make the ummah understand the importance of this subject matter. Look at the shan of our beloved master. Look at the methodology that he uses. Look at the compassion. He says, if you want, you can ask me the questions. Or if you want, I will tell you what your questions are. Jibreel has come and informed me what you came to ask me about. They said, Ya Rasulullah, you tell us. Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi I'm cutting the divide, short time is already limited. He said, you have come to ask me about the rights of Hajj and what Allah will give. They said, by the qasam of that being who sent you as his Nabi, this is exactly what we came to ask you about. So Allah's Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, thereafter, says to them, فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا خَرَجْتَ مِنْ بَيْتِكَ تَأُمُّ الْبَيْتَ الْحَرَامِ فَلَا تَضَعُ نَاقَتُكَ خُفًّا وَلَا تَرْفَعُهُ إِلَّا كُتِبَدْ لَكَ بِهَا حَسَنًا وَحُتَّ عَنْكَ بِهَا خَطِيئًا When you leave your house to proceed for hajj, every step, every step that you take, lift it up, put it down, or your animal takes lifting it up, putting it down, each step, Allah gives you one reward, and Allah wipes away one sin. وَأَمَّا رَكْعَتَاكَ بَعْدَ الطَّوَافِ كَعِدْ قِرَقَبَةٍ مِّن بَنِي إِسْمَائِيلٍ You will reach Kaabatullah, you will make tawaf, thereafter you will read two rakat salah. On that two rakat salah, Allah will give you the reward as if you freed an Arab slave. وَأَمَّا تَوَافُكَ بَيْنَ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَى كَعِدْ قِ سَبْعِينَ رَقَبًا Thereafter you will proceed for Sa'i between Safa and Marwa. Allah will give you the reward as if you freed 70 slaves. وَأَمَّا وُقُوفُكَ عَشِيَّةَ عَرَفَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى يَهْبِتُ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا فَيُبَاهِ بِكُمْ مَلَائِكَةَ عِبَادِي هَاُولَى جَاءُونِي شُعْثًا مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ يَرْجُونَ جَنَّتِي وَيَخَافُونَ عَذَابِي فَلَوْ كَانَتْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ كَعَدَدِ الرَّمَلِ أَوْ كَقَطَرِ الْمَطَرِ أَوْ كَزَبَدِ الْبَحَرِ لَغَفَرْتُهَا لَكُمْ أَفِيذُوا مَغْفُورًا لَكُمْ وَلِمَنْ شَفَعْتُمْ لَهُ Then the Hujjaj will gather on the plains of Arafah. Allah will descend, a descension in keeping with His greatness. And Allah will address His Malaika. Look at my slave. جَاءُونِي شُعْثًا مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ They have come to me from deep and distant ravines. Their hair is disheveled. Their body is full of dust. They are oblivious of themselves. Allah will address the gathering of Arafah. And Allah will say to them, If your sins be as many as the number of rain droplets that have fallen, or your sins be as many, as the foam on the waves of the oceans of the world or your sins be as many as the number of grains of sand on this earth I, Allah will say to his malaika I have forgiven all your sins I have forgiven all your sins return now in such a condition not only are you forgiven those on whose behalf you will ask for forgiveness they also are forgiven thereafter you will pell the shayateen for each stone for each pelding that sin which was going to take you to jahannam a major sin Allah will wipe away for each time that you pelt then you will slaughter the qurbani animal that reward Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa says is a special khazana, a treasure, a provision which Allah will reveal for you in the akhirah that Allah kept this for you. Then you will go to shave your hair. For every strand of hair, Allah will wipe away one sin. Allah will give you one neki. Then you will go for tawaf. The tawaf of hajj. The tawaf, tawaf is yara. The tawaf of hajj. What will happen in that ha- What will happen in that tawaf? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, فَإِنَّكَ تَتُوفُ فَإِنَّكَ تَتُوفُ وَلَا ذَنْبَ عَلَيْكَ You are now making 
making tawaf and you are sinless yati malakun hatta yada yadayhi bayna katif katifik the malaika of allah the angel will come down it will place his hand on your back and will say to you i'mal fi ma tastaqbil faqad ghafara laka ma mada from now make amal for the future all your sins of the past have been forgiven this is that amal this is that amal this is the mazhara of allah's ishq this is the mazhara the display of allah's muhabbat but my respected brothers what is the criteria these benefits allah says li yashhadu manafi alahum when quran speaks of salah what does allah say inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar salah will save you from shamelessness from lewdness from inequity from munkarat when it comes to zakat what does allah taala say to tahiruhum allah will cleanse your well through zakat and he will protect it when it comes to fasting la'allakum tattaqun allah will give you taqwa but when it comes to hajj allah for salah one or two things are mentioned zakat one thing fasting one thing for hajj li yashhadu manafi alahum Allah doesn't mention one or two things. Allah says we will give you many 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 benefits. Manafa. You can't count the benefits, but that Hajj has to be Hajj. That Umrah has to be Umrah. Like I said, time is limited. My respected brothers, there are certain khususiyat about this amal that are not found. For example, once a Jew, Yahud, came to Sayyidina Umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu ayat fi kitabikum nazalat law alayna ma'shar al-yahud nazalat lattakhadna dhalik al-yawm eida there is a verse there is a verse in your quran this jew says there is a verse in your quran if this verse had been revealed to us the jews we would have made the day of its revelation a day of eid who is he saying this to umar and who is umar law kana ba'di nabiyyun la kana umar radiyallahu an my nabi said if there had to be a nabi after me it would have been umar so not an ordinary person umar immediately inni la alam al yawm alladhi nazalat wal makan alladhi nazalat i know exactly which verse you are referring to I know the place it was revealed I know the time it was revealed you are talking of one Eid this verse was revealed on Arafa it was Jumu'ah it was after Asr another riwayat my nabi was on his camel sallallahu alaihi wasallam adba when this verse came down the narrator of the hadith says the back of the camel nearly broke with the weight with the weight of this verse what verse what verse Allah took deen Islam to its culmination to its completion to its perfection in Hajj this verse of the Quran comes down what verse al-yawm Allahu akbar what is this al-yawm al-yawm Quran is ajeeb hundreds of thousands of anbiya alayhim as-salatu was-salam shariat upon shariat sacrifice upon sacrifice age upon age decade upon decade eon upon eon era upon era stage upon stage from adam ali salam humanity nabi shariat humanity nabi shariat qurbani sacrifice stage upon stage and finally after thousands of years immeasurable sacrifice and qurbani and sacrifice uh, immeasurable qurbani and sacrifice stage upon stage finally allah says al-yawm today 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 now akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena today finally this deen islam is now coming Now it is complete. Now it has reached culmination. Now it has reached perfection. In other words, the seal, the door is closed. Closed. Inna dina, inna Allah il Islam. There is nothing and no other way now besides Islam. Wa may yabtaghi ghair al Islam dinan, falayyukbalamin. 
come before Allah with anything else besides Islam. And what is Islam? What is Islam? What is Islam? Jami'u jaa bihim nabiyu Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ma miftahul jannah. Ma miftahul jannah. What is the key to jannah Islam? What is Islam? What is the key to jannah? What is the key to maghfirat? What is the key to forgiveness? What is the road to Allah? One road, one road, one road. And that is Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nothing and no other way. Camel aid, space age, rocket age. Put whatever title you want. Let the Dajjalun and the Kazaboons come. Let the enemies of Islam come. Let them adulterate. Let them proliferate. Let them try and change whatever they want. But in Allah's court, one way only will get you Jannah. And that is pristine, pure Muhammadur Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Haq. Rahimullah puts it beautifully. Mathalul. مثل السنة في الدن مثل السنة في الدنيا كمثل الجنة في العقبة. He says the example of Sunnah of my Nabi's way of life in dunya is like the example of Jannah in Akhirah. من دخل الجنة في العقبة سلمة ومن لزم السنة في الدنيا سلمة. The one who enters Jannah in Akhirah is protected forever. And the one who holds on to Sunnah in Dunya is protected forever. There is nothing else that will be accepted by Allah except the way of life, the day and night of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hajj also, that reward, the benefits, the return, the compensation, the ish, the marifat, the connection with Allah. Nothing, nothing, nothing is possible unless that amal will be colored. Your hajj and umrah colored in the mold and color of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And unfortunately, the sad reality, my respected brothers, like I said, there are certain asbaq and lessons that we have to reconnect with. It is the days of Hajj. Go and ask our little, little youngsters, little youngsters, that just now certain soccer tournament is coming, or some useless activity is going to take place. They will give you encyclopedic knowledge. These are the players. This is the information mind-boggling. Basic mundane things of this dunya mind-boggling. Start from one side of the masjid to the other, to the other by. These are the days of Hajj. Just now we will be talking of the farewell Hajj of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My life is on sunnah. Sunnah in dunya is jannat in akhirat. Describe for me the Hajj of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What was my Nabi's Hajj? When did he start his Hajj? What happened on that Hajj journey? How was the Hajj of Rasulullah Wasallam conducted? Person will push his chest out. I made Hajj so many times. I made Umrah so many times. Describe the Hajj and Umrah of Rasulullah Wasallam. They will be looking to the left, looking to the right. Illa mashallah. Absolutely no idea whatsoever. This has become our deen. Dunya, we know minute details. We will not even take the trouble. And yet, Allahu Akbar. Like a shining star, Allah has protected every aspect of the Hajj of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like I said, time is limited. In just two or three minutes, I will mention little but just the starting point of the hajj journey of rasulullah sallallahu to give us an idea of the extent to which allah has protected every aspect of that hajj to create the shock the ins inspiration in us that learn what was the hajj of our beloved master sallallahu alaihi wasallam it was saturday listen to the extent intricate information that is has been preserved 14 centuries it was a saturday it was the 25th of Zulkada, 
before Zohar Salah in Medina Munawara, my Nabi put on two pieces of cloth. Where those pieces of cloth came from is recorded. They came from Yemen, a town called Sahara, which today is known as Muscat. He, after putting on these two pieces of cloth, he briefly explained the rights of Hajj. Read Zohar Salah in Masjid Nabawi, 25th of Zulqada. After the Zohar Salah, he started the Hajj journey. At that time, 12,000 Sahaba accompanied Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He appointed as Amir of Medina Munawara, Abu Dujana Ansari, Simak bin Kharshana, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Qurbani animals that he took with him, he appointed to look after them, Najia bin Jundub Aslami, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. By the time the Asar of that day came, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had reached Zul Hulayfa. Jibreel came down, informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this is a Mubarak place and a Mubarak night. Spend the night here. Five Salah he performed at Zul Hulayfa. The Asr of that day, Saturday, the Maghrib, the Isha, the Fajr and the Zohar of the next day. At, during that night, Asma bint Umais radiallahu ta'ala anha gave birth to a child, male child. The name was kept Muhammad. Rasulullah sallallahu told her that proceed Tie your ihram, but only when you come out of nifas, then you must perform tawaf. The next day, after Fajr Salah, Allah's Rasul made ghusl. Water was brought. Those days, by way of detergent, soap or shampoo, two types of leaves were used in that water. The names of those leaves are mentioned. Urshnan and Khitmi. Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made ghusl. After making ghusl, Sahaba described in detail the manner in which he washed his hair, passed his hand through his head, how he made that ghusl. Thereafter, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam applied oil to his hair. Thereafter, Talbid. Talbid is they used to put honey in the hair to, present the, to protect the hair from scattering in the desert climate. Talbid. He put honey in his hair. Thereafter, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam applied aitar. He applied aitar to his crown. He applied aitar on his body. He did not apply aitar on the ihram cloth. Thereafter, just before Zohar Salah, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained the rights of hajj. After he led the Zohar Salah in Zul Hulayfa, and then he mounted his camel. The camel's name Adba mentioned. As he mounted the camel, Labbaik. Allahumma hajjatan labbaik. He made the niyat of ifrad hajj. Jibreel came down with the command that Allah wants you to change the niyat to qiran hajj. To put hajj and umrah in one journey with one ihram. The reason for this is that in the days of ignorance, the Arabs used to regard it as a sinful act to perform Umrah during the days of Hajj. So Islam came to eradicate those practices of ignorance. So the command came that changed the niyat to Quran Hajj. From thereafter, he proceeded. First stop was 16 miles away in a place called Malal. The next stop was Roha. In Roha, there was a well. Allah's Rasul drank from the water of that well. He said 17 Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam spent the night during their Hajj in this particular place. Thereafter, he went to Athaya, then to Arj, then to Abawa, where the Qabr of the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was. Thereafter, to Usfa. Thereafter to Sarif, he reached Makkah Mukarramah on the 4th of Zul Hijjah. What happened on that journey? Intricate detail. 14 centuries have passed. We've already run out of time. My respected brothers, meet Allah in the color of Sunnah. Meet Allah in the mold of Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Learn the seerah of my Nabi. Learn his day. Learn his night. There is nothing more powerful, more mighty, a greater protection. Jannat in this dunya than the sunnah of Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was in Hajj. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا دين has reached culmination Allah is happy with this way of life Allah has chosen for you Islam in other words Muhammadur Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم الله يستوفي وحده